Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of our ongoing organic top ten list, coined by Chris. The evolution of a top ten. How does one get to a top ten list at the end of a year? Well, we decided to show you as we made that list and chronicle our gaming habits throughout the year and then come to, you know, build up the top ten games and then as new games added into the list, see which games got lost and then you can see how our lists form and shape. Pretty much how it's working out. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. I'm sorry, who? I'm Chris. Hashtag Chris. I'm doing it again. Hashtagging all over. It's a hashtag apocalypse. No? Hey. Hey. No? Oh, we lost Chris. Now you got a lovely visage of an unmade bed. Because I'm professional. Oh, hey, Chris. You're back. What's up? I always counted on your, uh, your, your personage to block my messy habits. Yo, look at this! Oh, boo. Okay, so... Look at this shelf! It's got tape on it! It's my shelf from childhood, Chris. Yeah, well, you're cheap! No, I'm nostalgic. Yeah, because tape is really helping it. It actually it has not helped it. No, all. I know! I've opened that drawer. It's a monster. And everything is just... It just it cascades down. You know what? We're talking lists, Chris. Uh, lists. You, you brought it up first. We're the Nolan Nerdcast. And this is our July. This is our furniture list. review of Matt's crap furniture. It to be fair, it's lasted like twenty seven years. That's impressive. Yeah, old yellow lasted a long time too. Yeah, and then we had to put them down. Yep. Hashtag Chris buys me a dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, all right. You know what? Let's do what we normally do and uh, discuss the list that existed. Uh huh. <laughs> what was that? It's a yawn. I'm allowed. Hashtag. All right. And then uh, I believe there's only one game being added to the list, and it's you this month. I know. It's weird. So for I don't even play games. My, you don't. That's what I've heard. That's the rumor. So let's just, uh, once again, let's, let's do what we do, and you go through your whole list, mm -hmm. and then I'll go through my whole list. Actually, I'll go first since you're the one adding something this time. Yeah, you go first. Okay. You, you do your list. Well, in no particular order, because we don't actually, uh, we won't number them 1 through 10 until the end. Yeah. This is just a list of the 10 games that will appear on the list. Number, and this is just chronological order of when they released, mm -hmm. I believe, for the most part. Not mine. Mine is just whenever. Yeah, yours is just willy-nilly. Yeah. All right, fine. Forget the chronological. That's I like it. Uh, Bravely Default is the first game. Um, you know, we've said it before, we'll say it again. It's an excellent RPG that unfortunately suffers from some uh, deja vu in the back half. Um, but man, if you have a 3DS, get it, and then get hyped for the sequel. Uh, next up, Infamous Second Son, which I'm even more excited about now that uh, First Light DLC was announced, and the game's going to have some legs on it. Uh, so that'll be fun to try out. Titanfall, because... <sighs> Because I own an Xbox One and I, it kind of justifies its existence. South Park Stick of Truth will go probably go down in history as one of the best licensed games around. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, so that Metal Gear goodness. Uh, Kirby, Triple Deluxe. Pretty deep. I know. I'm I'm yes. so ashamed of that. Ugh. Danganronpa, Trigger Happy Havoc, and we're about two months away from the sequel, so we'll see what uh, what happens when the two duke it out. Uh, Child of Light, one of the best uh, downloadable games of the year, unless you count the next one on my list, which is Transistor, which is easily the best indie game of 2014 so far, by far. And then finally, hashtag Watchdogs. Mm. Come on, all right. You do be the other half of the hashtags, Chris. Hashtag me. I'd rather not. I'll go I don't have anything list. else to add, so Chris, take it away. I'll go over my list. Braley Default, which I think will, will fall in the middle to bottom half of my list. Uh, Infamous, which is in the top half of my list easily. Uh, Titanfall, bottom half may not even make it to the make it to the end of the year. I've, I've realized it doesn't have much longevity. Like, when was the last time we played when it came out. March. Yeah. Um, 
Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, I think it's going to be in the top half of the list. It's actually a front runner for the game experience I enjoyed the most this year. Which blows my mind, considering you never had one, really. No. Um, Strider's probably not going to make it to the end of the year, just because uh, I tried going back to finish it, and I lost all the rhythm I had, so I have to start over from the very beginning, <sighs> because I just don't have it anymore. So, uh, Bandish is probably going to drop way off, because it was a fun indie game that I tried out for a little bit, but it's just... It's just not going right. to make it. MLB also probably won't make it just because... You're just... You're, you, considering you don't even have 10 yet, you're predicting a lot of drop-offs. I am predicting a lot you of drop-offs. must be... You better have a strong last quarter of I, this the, well, All the games are coming out in the last quarter of the year. You mean 2015? Oh, that too. Battlefield Hardline just got delayed to 15. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, Watch Dogs will probably be in the, in the middle lower half of the list. Shut up. Okay. Uh, the only game I'm adding to my list, and it'll probably be middle top half, uh, is Valiant Hearts. By um, Ubisoft. By Ubisoft. Uh, World War One is a, is a is a war that is often overlooked. Uh, World War Two is the sexy war. You know, it's it got, is. It has a clear cut bad guy. It has epic battles. It's it's sad to Harbor. It's sad to say it's kind of the perfect war. If, if you want to, if you want to, like, if you want to romanticize any aspect of it, it's like, it's like perfectly written war. It is there. It's it, that's a weird oh. sentence to say, but it is. A uh, World War One is the more is probably the more important war because of what it sets up. But it's just, but it, it's hard because no one wants to play a game where you're getting you're moving three inches and getting mowed down by machine right? gun fire. Like, oh, this is a machine gun. Quick, lose thousands of troops in a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Valiant Hearts or, or the mustard gas simulator. <sighs> Valiant Hearts works by making it a puzzle game. And I mentioned uh, on our on our audio video game podcast that I thought the puzzles weren't, uh, you know, particularly complex. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true because I made it to the end of the game without having any major difficulty. The only the only puzzle that was complex comes from the fact that no one has any spoken dialogue. So when they're telling you to bomb something, it's all images. Okay. Which is which is which is a little hard when you're trying to pinpoint a missile. See, uh, I've only started the game. Yeah. I haven't I didn't even know you'd beaten it, so I, I, I mustered I, I powered through it. Uh it does a really good job of showing of showing the harrowingness, you know, especially when you're dodging bombs, dodging mustard gas, dodging everything. What about the feels? Uh there are there are some feels. There are not as many feels as I expected. Okay. Uh but I think you know the historical data it brings up, the diaries, the uh, just this, just the notes on history that it that it does drop in. This is the kind of game that I I think should be in classrooms, because World War One's World War One's kind of a difficult like war to talk about again because World War Two's much easier. Uh, but like you Archduke could, Ferdinand, he's yeah, dead. Yeah, and World then War shit I. goes bad. Yeah. But you know, if you you could put this in there like you know the way Carmen San Diego games taught us oh, about man, that would be so cool. Anything. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed Valiant Hearts. I got uh, I had I had some feels, but not tons of feels. It doesn't it doesn't end the way you expect it to end. Okay. And I thought the final level in particular did an extremely good job of showing how chaotic and hectic it was. Mm -hmm. It's cool. extremely hectic. Well, I'm glad you liked it. My my favorite missions are the car missions where you're you're doing um, where you're driving to classical music and bombs are going off in tune to the music. Nice. So it's uh, like that Rayman Legends stuff. A little bit. I, 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 I got that. I got that feeling from it, but uh, okay. I really enjoyed it as a whole. So, uh, Valiant Hearts is it would be worth a purchase, I think. Awesome. Well, let's. Uh, so to recap, very little changed in July, and I'm going to be hard pressed to think of anything that'll change it in August, because I don't think Last of Us Remastered qualifies because no. it's a remaster. Yeah. Kind of like how Halo Master Chief Collection won't qualify in November because it's a remaster. I'm playing Halo One Collectors uh, Remastered, and I can't add to the list because it's the same game I played. Like, yeah, and this is the list ago. of 2014, not yeah. 2000. Whenever that came 2001. out, 2001. No, the, when the remastered came oh, out. Oh, last year then. No, what? It wasn't last year. It's like two years ago or something. Oh, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, new games only. And again, you might notice notable games off the list like Wolfenstein or Mario Kart because, again, we just haven't put the time in to make it worth it. You haven't even tried Wolfenstein. Yet. I haven't made it yet. And Mario Kart is a friends-only game for me, so if people aren't over, I'm not playing it. And that is what it is. 
Uh, however, Destiny Beta, if that's any indication, that game is going to be on the list. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm so sad it capped out at 8. I need to download. I, I haven't just so It's it cool. It's, it's, on, it's on. You have till tomorrow. So. Right. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And this has been the July very brief update on our ongoing organic top 10 games of 2014 list. Chris is now at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 minus 4, 5. Let's, let's so. just assume Destiny's going to be on there. So it'll be interesting to see when your cuts start being made. It's going to be a lot harder for me. Mm -hmm. If I had to venture a guess, my next cut will probably be Kirby. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway, so yeah, we're the Nolan Nerds. Tune in next month for, uh, and it was always weird because we're like, this is the July show, but we do it in the middle slash end of the month. Yeah. It is what it is. Precisely. We'll do better next year. We'll start in January. Yeah, we will. <laughs> okay. So January's going to be a nothing month. Actually, well, January is when Batman Arkham Knight comes out. Oh, fuck's sake, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're out. Peace. Peace. Caca! Brew Force. The name of the moon on Parsha.